city with a vibrant cultural and trading history which can be traced back as far as the 7th century, a city that continues to be an important trading route for East Africa, Middle East and beyond. The capital of nation proud of its history and independence in forging its own path. Your Excellency that defines this country and its people for the past three decades may have been one of division, insecurity, and poor governance. But rest assured, we are a resilient nation that is now firmly on the path to recovery. We are a nation of resilient, determined, and hard-working people this should be of no doubt to those of you who are based here in Mogadishu with us. While we acknowledge the social, economic, and security challenges that we face, the ability of Somali businesses to thrive, despite the harsh economic environment as a result of poor governance over the, over the last decades. It's testament to resilience and ingenuity of the Somali people. With the reach of our goal, with our, our global diaspora, and the return of many highly educated and technical savvy young people, there can be no doubt that it's our youth who will determine the future of this nation. And with our youth population comprising of 75% of the total population, the future of this nation is bright. <coughs> Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the federal government of Somalia is acutely aware that we have a lot of urgent and important work to accomplish, but equally, it's important our international partners are aware of what the federal government has achieved in the past six months, much of it of course, with your help. We took office nine months ago, and in that period, we have initiated or achieved a broad range of reforms. We have formulated a six-month narrow and ambitious agenda, which has so far resulted in the highest number of legislation brought to Parliament totaling 13 pieces of legislation with a further 10 in drafting stage. These legislations include a telecommunication law, anti-corruption law, public finance management and counter-terrorism law that are all foundation for the three pillars of our administrations, namely anti-corruption and economic transparency, security and reduce poverty as well as military pension in order to ensure Somalia once again holds its sacred covenant with the veteran of our armed force who pledged and were prepared to pay the ultimate sacrifice to keep our nation safe. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, however, this is not, the only, this is not only part of our strategy. Let, let there be no doubt of our commitment to implementing the Somali people's wish to move away from clan power sharing formula in choosing its leadership toward representative, inclusive, and accountability democratic model. To do this, we have started far-reaching steps to bring about long-term political stability by moving forward on an inclusive constitutional review process that will lay the foundation like a great building for a strong legislative framework that works in the interest of the Somali people. 
We also recognize that one person, one vote election are core to inclusive politics in Somalia. There is much to agree and we are starting now a consultative process on the most suitable electoral model and constituency with our institutions and our partners in the federal member states to achieve universal suffrage in 2020. This will be the cornerstone to ensuring political stability and a stronger legitimacy to our government at all levels. Another foundation for reinforcing this nation's political stability lies in our ability to successfully develop, develop and perfect our federal governance model. This is why we have recently concluded an MOU outlining the role and responsibility for various stakeholders in the review and finalizing of the Constitution. However, at a more practical level, we will seek to enhance the effectiveness of, com of the communication and coordination between federal member states and the federal government. For the sake of clarity, let me reiterate that we are committed to federalism. We believe and are committed to the federal member states as an important factor in ensuring a more representative and responsive governance. A case in point is the role played by the federal government as an honest peace broker in the recent agreement between Ahl Sunnah wa Jamia and Galmudu. However, we are equally committed to upholding the rights and jurisdictions of the federal government as, a step, as stipulated by our provisional constitution, upholding these rights and that of the constitutions that that constituents part of our federal member states will be instrumental in creating a cohesive political state. Achieving this balance is our greatest political challenge. Therefore, our federal model must ensure our sovereignty to select the policies and implement them for the security, welfare, unity, and long-term stability of our nation. The new management, the new management structure and processes of the Ministry of Internal Security, the establishment of Council of Internal Security Ministries, of the Council of, po of Police Commissions, of the, of the National po uh, Police uh, Technical Working Groups, are example of how we can bring our federal and state security agencies together to fight a common enemy. We believe in upholding the importance of developing powers to the state and by extension to these districts within the federal member states. We are also fully aware that socioeconomic improvements to the quality of our people's lives, the provision of basic public services, schools, health care, and of course jobs will undoubtedly help bring about political stability and this is the reason why, why the whole administration has placed priority on public finance management reform. I am happy to report we have completed two-thirds of the second IMF staff monitoring program and look forward to its successful completion in the coming days. Accomplishing this was not easy, both politically and institutionally, but it is and will continue to remain a priority, simply because this government's priority and objective is for economic development, for economic recovery, can be met with our ability to access international financial institutions, both at the macro and micro level. Our target, to, our target to reduce poverty by 2% annually, increase employment and stimulate a vibrant economic, particularly in our agriculture, livestock and fishery sector, will be difficult to achieve without the government's plan for infrastructure development. But as we all are aware, 
we are unable to carry out the infrastructure upgrade this country needs without debt relief because this requires access to international financial institutions. To put it simply, if we are not, up, if we are not able to build roads required by small businesses, be they farmers, livestock, herders, or fishing communities to bring their produce to the market, it will be difficult to meet our state goal, our stated goal of reducing poverty. This is why we have proposed the establishment of National Economic Council to discuss and advance the economic interest and priority of the federal government. It's a, it's a cross Minister, Minister Council, which will consider the economic challenges and opportunities that can be best serve the Somali people. In terms of youth employment, that's must. Not only to grow our country, but also to preventing radicalization. We need jobs to retain and returning the, the, the diaspora and we need jobs to stop our brightest and more ambitious young people leaving to seek a better life else, elsewhere. Together with assistance of our international partners, we have created jobs for 5,000 youth across the country and are aiming for further 20,000 in the coming year. However, we must still do to retain our young people. The initiative is a primary example of the way we wish to see our international partners engaging with us. We understand that we ask of international partners is to take risk and invest in Somalia, but equally. We ask you to hold us to task to what we agree on our part. This is the principle of our mutual accountability. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on the security front, of those of you who were with us during yesterday's security conference, you would have heard how much we have achieved in moving forward the implementation of national security architecture from assessing the operational readiness assessment of our army and police and develop the appropriate appropriate remedial plans and strategies to piloting electronic payment system for our security forces and to form a new joint force for Mogadishu to improve security. Let me assure you, this was done not without political cost and risky taking on our part as a government. We have taken a leap of faith in our international partners assertions and promises such that a failure to deliver would likely be a catastrophic. Accountability starts with us, and rightfully the Somali people will hold us to account, both at the federal and state level, for the policies which we have, which we have championed as means to remedy their daily struggle, be it socially, economically, and security-wise. Implementing quickly the agenda we have articulated to the Somali nation requires the assistance of international community. We ask you to take a leap of faith in us. We stand ready with open arms for a platform of mutual respect and accountability, but above all, a platform underpinning by ethos in which we say what we mean and mean what we say. I thank you.